So for me, I had to make a decision. Do I choose to be married and let this light that is inside of me be dimmed for the rest of my life? Or do I choose to walk away and walk away with nothing and start from scratch, wow. but in the process, find my voice? Sejam muito bem-vindos a mais um episódio do podcast para elas. Cá estamos para mais uma conversa desta feita com uma mulher não moçambicana, uma empresária que vive na África do Sul, mas ela tem estado a fazer um trabalho muito interessante a nível do continente africano e com certeza que Moçambique também está no meio deste número de países com quem ela tem trabalhado, com quem ela tem colaborado e também tem estado a mobilizar um grupo de mulheres a, de certa forma, se inter internacionalizar, não só a nível uh, regional, eh, mas muito mais que isso. Uh, Falo-vos da Pandora, que tive o prazer de conhecê-la durante a conferência anual do setor privado uh, em junho e durante a estadia dela nós conversamos e chegamos à conclusão que era interessante fazer uma conversa aqui no podcast para elas. E cá estamos hoje para o primeiro episódio que eu vou estar a dirigir em inglês, mas obviamente que vocês terão legendas para poderem ac acompanhar a interessante história da Pandora. Pandora, welcome to podcast para ela. Thank you, thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Oh, it's thank a you. great pleasure. It's thank a great you. pleasure, Pandora, to have you here. We met um, a few months ago. It was in May. To It be was exact. in May, exactly. We met in May. So no, no início eu falei de junho, mas é maio. So we met in May. So it shows how women can make things happen very <laughs> quickly. Huh? Yes. So we met in May. Uh, you came here, you were here, and we decided that we're going to have a conversation. Actually, I invited you and yes. you said, yes, yes, I will come. And at some <laughs> point you sent me a message, Alima will be there on the 18th of July. And here we are. Here I am. Yes, yeah, so welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. So We are making history in podcast para elas. Yes, My we first are, guest in we English. We are making new history where <laughs> I am the first guest to bring English to the podcast. Yes. Thank you for that opportunity. That's great. That's great. It's a, I'm very honored and I'm very happy to have you here. Pandora, uh, so some people follow you on social media, but... Uh, There is a group of people who do not know you, especially uh, Mozambican and other Portuguese speaking countries that you, you have been uh, working. Uh, so it would be interesting to, to talk about you. Who is Pandora? All right. Um, so my name is Pandora Mabai. Okay. I am the board president for Big Business Africa. I am the MD for Pandora's Box Projects, PTY LTD. I am an advocate of change. I am a mother and I am a businesswoman. Wow. That is who Pandora is. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you, you were born in South Africa? Yes, You're I was born and bred in South Africa, Cape Town. Okay. Uh, Gugule, to, to be exact. Okay. <laughs> Those from South Africa, they will know. Uh -huh. I'm born and bred out of Cape Town. Okay. In South Africa. Okay. But currently, I am residing in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So you were born in South Africa, in Cape Town, and uh, you started going to school in Cape Town? Yes, I did my primary school in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. I did my high school in Cape Town. And of course, after high school, you always want that freedom of going to another city, yes. uh, go and study outside of hometown. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to go to Johannesburg. But my parents, they felt like Johannesburg is too fast. It's fast paced. Yes. Our child is still young. Uh -huh. uh, and my mother used to say, Pandora, we don't think. Johannesburg will be the best space for you right now. Mm. Because remember Johannesburg, it's like the New York of South Africa. Yes. That is where everything happens. So because I was so eager and I didn't want to do my varsity mm -hmm. in Cape Town, 
Uh, then I relocated. I went to Varsity College to study marketing IMM, but I was only allowed to go to Port Elizabeth, okay. which is the Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the only way they can make me leave Cape Town. The condition was not Joburg, but any other city. <laughs> okay. And the closest city was Port Elizabeth. Okay, is yes. where you studied marketing? That is where I did marketing IMM. Okay. And I studied through Varsity College, which is a private college okay. in Cape Town. How old were you by then? At that time, I was 19 mm -hmm. at that time. Okay. Yes, because I finished grade 12 in 2001. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was 19 when I started doing my first year. Okay, yes. great. And then you, you finished your marketing. What have you done afterwards? So for me, my dream was always Johannesburg. So going to Port Elizabeth was a strategy because my parents said, if you go and you finish school, mm -hmm then you can look for a job in Johannesburg. So immediately in 2004, when I was done in Port Elizabeth, the first place I thought of, the city of gold, <laughs> Johannesburg. <laughs> Finally, now I'm ready for you after three years. Wow. And uh, I went to Johannesburg and I started working as an intern in Johannesburg. Okay. That is where I got my first job opportunity. Mm. And I started at the bottom, yeah. <laughs> even though I had marketing, mm -hmm. but my first job was in a call center, wow. Telesure. And for me and the mindset that I had then, as long as you've got your feet at the door, you will grow while you are inside. But for now, just take what comes to you. Exactly. And for me, I was excited. It was Joburg yes. and I could be able to go to Johannesburg. Great. Yes. No, that's a very important point. Um, I mean, we, we have a lot of dreams, but it's important to start from the bottom, you yes. know? Uh, I think it's important to have this mentality, especially their young people. They should know that things do not happen from one yes. day to from day to night. It takes time. So you started in a call center. I started in a call center, Teleshow call center, and I worked as a call center agent. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but I had these big dreams inside of me. Uh, the entrepreneurial spirit was there. Mm -hmm. When I was working in a call center, I was selling. Okay. to women. So I used to stock up clothes for women. So that whole entrepreneur journey mm -hmm. didn't start now. It started then when I was in the call center. Yeah. And I started growing within the call center. You started getting experience. I started getting experience. I started getting the background. I started getting exposure. Exactly. And this is what I always say, especially to young entrepreneurs, the corporate experience it's critical for you to build your business. There you get to learn what does it mean to have a structure. There you get to learn how finance department is handling finances of the, of the company. Mm -hmm. You get to learn that there's human resources. You get to learn that there's marketing department. So when you want to be an entrepreneur, I always say, please go and work. Yeah. so that you can learn the structures that will make your business be able to function. Absolutely, absolutely. So how long have you been there as in the, in the call center? So I didn't stay for too long okay. because opportunities started opening up mm. to me. I remember at some point I was hired by a magazine where I was a marketing manager for it. For me, what you put in and what you do when you're in a role and how you still, I was still looking. I wasn't sitting there and I wasn't looking for roles that were related to what I studied. Mm -hmm. I was still looking and applying for jobs okay. while I'm inside the job. And when the door opened for me to go and work, it was called Successful Woman Magazine okay. at the time. And I got in and I went to work there and I was working as a marketing manager. Then from there, I remember I got a job. I moved to Old Mutual. Mm. But when I moved to Old Mutual, I moved to be an executive personal assistant to the CEO. And that is when I learned what it means to really, really handle business on that level of being a CEO, a group CEO of such a big organization. Yes. And for me, I learned order there. I learned how to 
manage the board. I learned a lot of things that mm-hmm. are actually helping me right now yes. in my business. And with that time, that's when I went back to school, when I was with Old Mutual. Okay. I went to Mill Park Business School and I went to study project management mm. while I was working. So as women, we can do so many things. Absolutely. It chooses on what you choose to do with your time. Mm. So during the day, I was working in the office. At night, I was in the books. I was studying. For me, self-development, growing myself and empowering myself to become better, it came with a sacrifice. And the sacrifice was go back to school while you're working. Yeah. You have to to keep learning, you know. And why project management? So for me, the reason why project management is because I'm an entrepreneur by birth. And you cannot be an entrepreneur without you understanding how to pro- manage projects. And my belief was you cannot make other people do something that you cannot do. Mm-hmm. So as leaders and as business owners, we always have to learn on how things are done in order for us to teach those that work with us. Because people don't always work for you, but they work with you to build your vision. So for me, project management was very important on how do I structure things when I've got a project? Mm. What does it take? What is the visible study? How do we manage the the budgeting of it? So I needed a skill that was going to be outside of marketing because marketing, I knew that this is going to help me to market the business. Yes. But to manage it, what did I need? Mm-hmm. I needed project management. Perfect, perfect. So you you started marketing management uh, while you were working, and um, when you when you finished your project management, yes. you continued working for that company, or you I was, moved? I was still with Old Mutual, and I worked with them for two years. Okay, uh, from 2012 until 2015. Okay. then 2015, an opportunity opened up with L'Oreal International. Wow, and for me, it was marketing mm. and it related to what I really, really loved doing. At that time, Pandora's box projects was already there in the background. Companies registered. When I've got time, I'm managing other projects on the side while I'm at work. And then I moved. I went to L'Oreal, but L'Oreal only lasted six months because Ooh. Pandora, the entrepreneur, was Was saying, Pandora, let's let's go, let's move, let's go. (laughs) Yeah, that invoice was, you know, shouting inside of you. And then you started your own business. Within six months into the job, I resigned (laughs) and I said, I'm going to do it afraid. I was afraid. I think that's what always held me back. I was so afraid, but I said, if I fail, I'll learn the lesson. And I'll pick myself exactly. up again. But what I need to do right now yeah. is to take the risk. Exactly. And I took the risk and I resigned. Yeah. And I never looked back. Imagine if you didn't try. You would never know if you were here today or yes. not. As Pandora, the, the woman doing amazing things, you yes. know. So it's always good to take the risk. As I, you took the said, risk. Yeah. I took the risk. If it doesn't work, we go back. We restart. Yes. We do something else. Impor- life is about it. Yeah? That's what you life know? is all about. Yeah. The lessons and exactly. the growth. Exactly. Absolutely. And um, you started your business at which age did you? I, I, I read from your, from your story that at some point you you had a relationship yes and you were a runaway bride yes i am a runaway bride tell, tell <laughs> us about this story so for me pandora the entrepreneur was always there but i feel that sometimes when we are in relationships and family is important i love family i love the family unit but you need to be with someone that will support you to be who you are born to be. So I was in a relationship with a prominent person in my country and we were getting married and I became a runaway bride one month away from my wedding. And the reason why I did that, because there were too many restrictions that this marriage I'm getting into was coming with. He was looking for a housewife. I am not a housewife. There were too many things of you can do this, you can't do this. And I felt that was dimming my own light Mm. and who I'm born to be. There is nothing wrong with being a housewife. 
but not all women are born to be housewives. And once you know who you are and what you want to become in life, never hold back your dreams for anyone. So for me, I had to make a decision. Do I choose to be married and let this light that is inside of me be dimmed for the rest of my life? Or do I choose to walk away and walk away with nothing and start from scratch, wow. but in the process, find my voice yeah. and become all that I was born to be. So I sat with myself and for me, I had to sacrifice the marriage mm. in order for the Pandora that the world sees today to be born. So I am a runaway bride and I started at nothing. But when I walked away and I had nothing, the voice was to there. advocate for change, to empower women, to empower the youth came out. It's, it's really sad as a woman when I see men who do not support their, their wives, their girlfriends, you know, towards their dreams. Because, I mean, I don't see, uh, uh, there is nothing wrong a woman to work, manage home, manage marriage. So it's, it's, really, um, it's really sad when I see a man putting a woman in a situation where she has to choose between her dreams and the marriage. Yes. That's that's very difficult decision. And 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 one thing I always say to women is when you are in that space, it comes with emotional abuse. It comes with abuse in many forms. And because the world was created in such a way where males are always dominating and we as women are taught to be submissive. But what is the submission that we're talking about? So for me, I always say your happiness comes first. You need to be happy in what you're doing. And emotional abuse is abuse. Absolutely. I went through more than just emotional abuse. Mm. There was physical as well. And most of my decisions were coming from what I'm experiencing and the fact that why can't you be supported by so if you love someone love is a doing word love is a verb so love brings action mm -hmm. if someone says this is what I would like to come to do because you love that person you want to support and I know there are men out there who truly support their wives yes. and their girlfriends. And you're not afraid for her to shine. Exactly. Because her shine says a lot about you. Exactly. As a man yes. that is leading that household. Absolutely. Who is behind her. Who's behind that woman. Supporting her, you know. And at the end of the day, it's a family achievement. It's the couple achievement. It's the family it's the legacy of the family. Absolutely. So for me, I became a runaway bride for Pandora to find her voice. So it looked like a mess because I had to leave our home. I left everything behind. But what out was of the, the reaction of your family and your community when you took that decision? Because I'm an only child to my mom, um, my mother always supported okay. what is best for her child. It was hard for me because I'm in a foreign city mm -hmm. and I refused to go back home. As much as my mother wanted to cushion me to say, come back home um, until you find your feet. And my response to my mother was always, you've built your life and everything that you have. I'm so proud of you as my mother, but I need to find my path. Yes. I need to find my journey. If it means I start from rock bottom, in order for me to find my purpose. And at my rock bottom, Pandora found her purpose. So my family was in full support. I lost a lot of friends wow. because people felt I was making a mistake. Mm -hmm. People felt it just didn't make sense to them. But everything starts with me and everything ends with me. If you are a friend, and you truly want to see me grow, you will support me in the good and the bad decisions that you think they are bad. Absolutely. Had I listened to them then, mm. 
I would not be in Mozambique right now and becoming the woman that I've become to the world at large. And a lot of women wouldn't be supported by you. A lot of projects wouldn't happen exactly. today. You wouldn't be here. Ex I would not be sitting here yes. at this amazing podcast <laughs> led by a woman yes. where we are saying woman empowerment. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Wow. That, that was a very courageous decision, Pandora. And um, we, we know a lot of women that are living unhappy. Yes. A lot of women who left behind their dreams, who left behind their projects because they wanted or their partners did mm. not allow or did not support them to, to realize those dreams, which is really sad. So we, we need to change this narrative. It has to. It has to change because there is a quote that says, nothing can dim the light that shines from within. And I stand to say, it can be dimmed by the one who carries the light when they choose not to recognize what they carry within. Wow, that's powerful. That's so powerful, exactly. Yeah. We should have the power to put on and off the light. Yes, very important. Yeah, that's, that's true. Very, very important. Yeah, that's true. So um, at that point, you you started, your, you continued your business, you, you started run, uh, running after your dreams, your projects. I started. And how was it? So for me already, when I was at work, Pandora, the speak, my first speaking opportunity, I'm a runaway bride in year 2009, December. Okay. By 2010, when it was World Cup in South Africa, yes. there was an event for women that was put together by a lady called Majaji. Mm -hmm. She was running this project where she had professional women. Um, I mean, the doctors, I mean, the CEOs. And she had this private event, intimate event. And when she was looking for a speaker, she called me and she said, I want a real story. I want a woman who can speak to the hearts of women. Do you mind sharing your story with us? Because mm. people knew <laughs> it was on the tabloids. People knew okay. what was happening in my life. And that was my first speaking opportunity. So my projects, some of them were Pandora the Speaker. They started with Pandora the Speaker. Okay. The woman who is advocating for change. So gigs were coming after that 2010 gig a lot of people started listening to this young girl and what she has to say mm. and companies were booking me from proudly south africa old mutual wow. themselves um departments of government people wanted me to come and empower the youth and the women with my voice so there were a lot of opportunities where i'm getting paid to speak and for me I was happy because yeah. I was doing something that I love and it's only not only about what I love but I could see the impact exactly. it had on people's lives yeah and I'm sure a lot of people were were saying that will not work out you know they were expecting you to go back probably Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, but, uh, you know, God also help us when we, we are very clear about our dreams. Uh, we, if we are very clear on what we want and we have the faith that it will work out, that we can make it. And, yes. And it really, I could feel your faith on your decision, on the, the <laughs> you know, how keen you were to realize it wasn't dreams. easy. It wasn't easy. And I love what you're saying is, I would have never made it without God. That is when my faith mm -hmm. grew and resilience, perseverance. Were there hard times? There were times where I felt like giving up. Mm -hmm. But I always say, even to now, if I give up, I am not just giving up on myself. I'm giving up on so many women. I'm giving up on the youth. I'm giving up on the world. Hence, my hashtag is always don't drop the mic because I've got the mic. But when I choose to drop that mic, I'm failing so many people 
that have looked at me as an inspiration yes. through their journeys. So it's too much of an expensive mm. price. People's destinies are on the mic. Wow. Well. So you started and you never stopped. I never stopped. <laughs> I never stopped. Then I started Amazing. consulting for marketing uh -huh. and then I was using my marketing skill and I'm like, okay, this thing is growing. And out of that little faith, more came to my table. Because when you stick to your lane and you do the right thing, yes. others, you never know who's watching mm. you. Others were watching exactly. me. You never know exactly. who's watching you. This is an amazing example. We never know who is watching. This reminds me when I started the podcast at the beginning. I was so small <laughs> trying to get in the this social media world that I was very new. I was a non, I was a stranger on social media. I was very known at corporate level. Yes. But on social media, I was a newcomer. So I was, um, I had my fears, but even though I was pushing, I was going. At some point when I had about 6,000 6, uh, 6, followers, I was contacted by, by UN women. And I was so surprised for a partnership. I was surprised and I asked myself, wow, so this is start happening. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people who have thousands, you know, million, half of million followers. followers. And they are coming to me. I have six, 6,000 only. Mm, it, it's a sign. People are watching me. People are looking at me. You never know who's we watching you. We never know. You. Sometimes it takes longer than we, 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 we expect. Sometimes it takes longer than we, we imagine. And sometimes we, we lose hope. Mm. We think that ah, this is not going to happen. But every step you take, there is someone watching you. So at some point it will happen. It will definitely happen. So I like what you said. And I, I see also my story on that, on, on your words. Uh, when you say there, there, there were people watching, they, sometimes they take time to take that final decision, but they are watching you. Mm. They are, you know, they are looking at what you are doing. And at some point they will come to you. They will take that final decision and final set step of calling you and saying, you are doing great job. We want to work with you. You never know who's watching you. All, what I always say, just keep doing the right thing mm -hmm. and stick to your lane. Yes. Don't try to be anyone or anything because we are all unique. Um, our fingerprints are different. Absolutely. And you may not be popular. You don't have to be popular. You are here to make a difference. Mm -hmm. You are saying others have 1 million and you are sitting at 6,000 following. It's about the conversations that you are having. The impact you are creating. Thank you. It's about the content that you bring. There's so much content out there. Yes. But what makes you different? Mm. And that is why you never know who's watching you. Just be authentic. Do what you are born to mm -hmm. do and be consistent. Consistency. Because from 2010 to date, I have never dropped the mic. And I will never drop the mic. The mic is yours. The mic is mine. To advocate for change. Great. So where have you been with your mic? <laughs> Besides with, Mozambique, tell us. <laughs> I've been to Angola with the mic. I've been to Zimbabwe with the mic. I've been to Zambia with the mic. I've been in different provinces within my own country mm -hmm. in South Africa. I've, I've moved so much around South Africa. But of the countries, Angola, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Zim, um. It's Zimbabwe, Zambia, Mozambique, and Angola, and okay. there's many more countries. Okay, that's but I've great. become a regular mm -hmm. in Mozambique and Angola. Yes. <laughs> the, the the Portuguese have really, really, really embraced 
what I have to bring to the table. So that's really interesting because you are English speaker. Yes. And the Portuguese speaking countries are inviting you. From one side, it shows the, the, the powerful um, message that you're sending. Yes. On the other side, it shows that the, the world is becoming small. English is a global language. Yes. And um, everywhere you can find people who understand. And today, it's, we have the translations. We have, for conference, we have simultaneous translations. So people can easily follow you and your your presence on the CASP was really appreciated by many women. Yes. It was um, very yeah. <laughs> From there, I got so many contacts on social. Okay. And people were saying, you really impacted me at the CASP conference. Mm. And, I, and I'm thinking, I'm English speaking. Yes. So you never know who's watching you and who's listening to you and the impact that you make. But I'm very grateful for the open doors within these countries where it has really opened up an opportunity and a platform for me, for my voice to be heard. Mm. And Africa has always been my heart, always. And I'm happy. I'm, oh, I'm so happy. That's great. I'm so happy. That's great. Uh, Pandora, when you travel across your country, in different countries that you have been, how do you feel the woman's spirit? How do you feel in terms of their, their hope, their, uh, their expectations, in terms of how they are keen to grow, to make things happen? Right now, where we are as women in Africa and what I've seen in the countries that I've been to, mm -hmm is we are defining the new era and we are making new history. Women are booming in ways that we are so disruptive to the system that equality is important. Our voices matter. In decision-making in boardrooms matter. I see a movement in these countries where these women have so much to give, mm. but all they needed was the right people to come at the table to say, let us do it together. So where we are now, and I sat back and I said, what else can I offer Africa outside just, because I see women that have so much hope, they have so many ideas, how do we, how do we come together and do this? And Big Business Africa is the next idea that came out. And I was saying, let's collaborate, Africa. Let's bring women to the table. Yes. Um, and we have a company that is called Big Business Africa. Yes, that tell is, us about Big, Big Business that Africa. That is woman-led. Okay, yes, <laughs> it you is, are the chairman. It, yes, I'm the board president. You're the board uh, president. Yeah, I'm the board president for okay. Big Business Africa. So that was born to come and give space for women mm -hmm. in Africa to come together. Because if you look at our board, it's Mozambique. We've got women from Mozambique on our board. We've got Angola, we've got Zimbabwe, we've got South Africa. So there's hope of collaboration for women in Africa. So as I've That's been moving amazing. around the countries, I was studying, mm -hmm. I was doing my visible study that what do we want as women and how do I bring all of us together? together and then we move. I can't wait for us to have a woman president in oh, a country. Yes. I can't wait. <laughs> yes. I would love that. I love the words you, 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 you say frequently, we are defining a new era. Yeah, we are defining the new era. And I also feel it that we are defining. The challenges are there. But there will we are always moving. be challenges. Yes. Special, special for... African countries where the, you know, the, we have cultures, traditions, which at some point are limited. You know, they, they, they have some, we have some uh, cultural aspects that do not allow women to, to grow, lead. To lead. In some countries, they, they cannot, men cannot see a woman lead a company where they are. Uh, there are countries where men do not want to be led by women. So there are still some challenges, but 
I'm sure we are showing that we are capable. We are preparing ourselves. We are getting the skills, the abilities to get there. So I think with those countries where those things are actually happening, by how we lead as the women, the Alimas and the Pandoras that are on the spaces where we are seen and we are heard and we are given opportunities, Mm -hmm. indirectly we are teaching those countries that you can trust women. But it will take us as these women to lead with integrity, substance, truth, Mm -hmm. and belief. And those are my values. So once we do it right, we are teaching them that Mm -hmm. it is safe to hand over to a woman. But remember, they will never do what they have not seen. Absolutely. So we need to lead by example. Exactly. In order for them to change their mindsets. Absolutely. This is how we will get yes. there. Yes. Yeah. By showing that we are ready. Thank you. Yeah, lead by example. And uh, the other day I was in a conference and there was a woman who was saying that sometimes we also, as women, we make some mistakes. Yes. We are given opportunities and um, we take those opportunities for granted. We don't, when we are on that chair, if if it's a board or whatever position we have possibility to, to, to be there as a woman, we, we should have in our mind that we are representing all other women. Yes. So if we fail, they will say a woman failed. And you have failed all other women. We are failing all other women. If we succeed, they said, wow, women are getting, you know, they they are capable now. They have the capacity to be in leadership position. So do you think this this mindset is important for women when they go to a certain position to have that responsibility that I'm taking all the women in my shoulders? I have this responsibility to perform. So it is very important because we're sitting in a space where we have to prove ourselves. And it's interesting what you're saying that if we win, I was speaking to my business partners, Ulebo and Zolisa yesterday when I got to Mozambique and I said, ladies, my win is our win. So let's ensure that we deliver with excellence. Mozambique, I am here to do the meetings that I'm here to do. However, in the midst of it all, back home, keep working while I'm sitting on the podcast. The the system must move. Exactly. We still need to keep delivering. We've got Mm. a conference coming up. Let's let's not wait on Pandora. And my, my strong belief is teamwork makes the dream work. Once we grasp that as women and in the positions that we get given as women, we need not to lose of understanding that we are naturally nurturers. Mm -hmm. Let's not try to want to be men when we are in those boardrooms. When you are given that opportunity, show up as a woman. Show up at your best leadership, not forgetting that I am a woman caring other women. I am not here to compete with my brothers. Mm -hmm. I am here to show my brothers what we are capable of doing as women. Be a woman and just do what you are there to do because you are there to uplift other women. Absolutely. And how how is your experience? Tell us about your experience when you, you go to these countries, when you go to other cities or even uh, in Johannesburg where you're based, when you meet with male, uh, male partners, uh, male, uh, male that you want to do business with them, how is it um how is it received are they open are they open to hear your your ideas your project when you tell them for example at some point if they they are aware that you are not married but you have a a, a daughter because it some people still have some stigma a kind of stigma you know and um, also when you talk about the, your story the runaway bride in the conferences, how men 
and the woman look at you? What they tell you about this story? So to answer the first question where you are saying, how am I received when I'm knocking at males' doors for mm -hmm. us to partner and work together? I've had many rejections. Many men, powerful men, have closed doors in my face. But I always say to myself, the worst answer anyone can ever give you is a no. Mm -hmm. But a no does not mean that's the end of the road. I always choose to look at the positive. I've got so many great men that are supporting me. Amazing, powerful leaders in South Africa mm -hmm. and outside my country. I've got Dr. Matthew Sposa, who's one of my greatest mentors in South Africa. That man makes time for my dreams. That man guides me. That man criticizes me. That man celebrates my wins. In Mozambique, I've got another mentor, Dr. Salimo Abdullah. That man supports me and we are here today because of him saying, here are the women who are like you, yes. that you can grow together. Those are the men that I'm looking up to, mm. to say, there are men who support our projects. Then we've got Angola, there's Kumbi Jr. Who calls me his mother because I mentored him. But he always says, there's nothing I can do in Angola without you by my side. So do we have men that support? Yes, they are. I've just counted them. So men are receiving me with my projects. Men are opening doors for me in their countries for my projects. Dr. Posa also helps me in my country to mentor me and to help me grow mm. and become better. Because when you know better, you do better. Absolutely. Rejections will always be there. You'll always get people that are not going to support you. But focus on the ones that actually opens those doors for you. Because those are the most important people in your life. That's true. That's true. Yes. That's true. Yeah, the doors open and we have to to make our best when these doors are open. Yes. When you're given an opportunity, what you do with that opportunity, it's not about your mentor. Mm -hmm. It's about you. In order for you to show that you're a good mentee, is to be given an opportunity and work at the opportunity that you are given. Yes. Your mentor then becomes a great mentor. He does not do the work for you. Mm -hmm. He opens the doors, but you need to know that you've got to do the work for things to happen. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. The, the, I mean, the, after the door is opening, then it's up to you. Up to you what you, yes. what you choose to do exactly. with that open door. Exactly. I met you in May yeah. and there was an opportunity. Yes. The door was open. Here we are. It's what I used to tell to some women, especially those who don't like to go to conferences, events. That's where you network. Exactly. That's where you meet people. Exactly. That's where they get to know who you are yeah. and what you do. Absolutely. And the other day, I also shared a statistics which says 85% of the success of your business is based on, the, on your network. And 15% is based on your technical knowledge. So which means that it's a very important very, that very we, important. we do network. And the the best places to do network is conferences. At conferences. Yeah. And there are a lot of conferences that you can attend for free. A lot. A Even lot. online. Even if online. you can't get there exactly. physically. Exactly. Now we've got online options, but mm -hmm. take the initiative. Yeah. Take the first step. Show that you are interested. Mm. Nothing is going to happen without you moving. Absolutely. You need to move. Yes. That's true. You know, when I went to Cash, I always write down the strategy, why, what I want to achieve, who do I want to meet on the call. First, I will get the list. I will try to understand who is going to be there, looking at the program, trying to look at the guest lists, uh, the people who registered, if possible. And then I'll start looking and saying, I want to try to meet this person, that person, that person. At the end, I will go there with this very specific agenda. Of course, I will meet other people, yes. but at least I'll say, okay, Pandora is there. What do I want with Pandora? 
You've identified what, exactly what you want. Exactly. What can I get from Pandora? Why, what can I get from from that person or that person? So when I get there, I start, you know, going after these people to try to 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 get what I want to get from those people, from those meetings. So I think it's important also not just to go to a meeting, to a conference, but to have a strategy. Strategy is important. Always do a review of where you are as a business and be honest with yourself mm. and say, what am I not doing that's not making me get to Alima? Yes. Alima is powerful. I want to work with Alima, a collaboration with her. But what are you doing? Mm -hmm. What's your strategy mm -hmm. to get to Alima? Yes. That's true. It's very important. Yes, that's very important. Pandora, we are almost uh, ending our conversation, with, yes. which is really, really, <laughs> really interesting. But um, tell us about the October event. So we've got um, the Big Business Africa Conference coming up on the 16th and the 17th of October mm -hmm. 2024. It's happening in Johannesburg. And... This is the first Africa business conference after South African elections. Okay. So we felt that we need to come together as decision makers, leaders, young entrepreneurs and females mm -hmm. to come and position ourselves in collaboration. And our conference, we are a woman-led organization. When we're looking at our speakers, we're looking at 60% females at the table and 20% youth mm -hmm. and 20% males because we are saying, as women, our voices must be heard. There are many powerful women around Africa that are coming to the conference. We've got speakers from Mozambique, Angola. We've got Zimbabwe. We've got South Africa. Uh, we have got Nigeria pending. Mm -hmm. So we are bringing African leaders to come and be a solution to African challenges. Africa needs to decide what Africa needs. Yes. And we are there as these leaders to also focus on the young entrepreneurs mm -hmm. because we need to pass on the baton at the end of the day. So if we don't bring them to the conferences, what are we saying is their future? Yes. So we are leading by example where we're saying we are all coming as a collective, big leaders mm -hmm. from the countries, big CEOs from the countries, and young entrepreneurs that are going to be learning and their voices must also be heard. Yes. Even when you look at our panel of speakers mm -hmm. that we have, we have chosen the young, powerful in the business world and in, in corporates. And yet we have the older that are, have walked this journey for so long. And for us, it's about let's pass on the baton. Let's come together and make business together and empower each other yeah. and start collaborating within Africa. So that is the biggest conference, biggest project we have this year. Wow. And it's exciting for us. Great. It's That's exciting. really great. I'm looking forward to that. I have to go there. I have we to would go love there. to and have you there. And network with this <laughs> amazing woman. We would love to we would love to have you. We've got speakers from America as well, wow. UK coming through. And look. It's an opportunity for Af Africa to come together and say, we are here to network. We are here to be a solution. We are here to say, let's trade amongst each other in yes. our businesses. Yes. How do we trade? Mm -hmm. So we're looking at different sectors from education to trade to politics and leadership, health, all sectors are involved. Okay. Where we are coming and saying, let us collaborate and make a difference in Africa. That's very important. Let's collaborate. Let's and collaborate. And make things happening. Let's collaborate. To this new era. Yes, defining <laughs> the new era. The new era. Perfect. Pandora, so we are we are almost ending this conversation. Is there any other information that you would like to share before we close? Uh, maybe something I did not ask you and you uh, would like to mention? Uh, I think you've asked me all that you wanted to ask me. I'm yes. a mother and I'm very proud to a beautiful 13-year-old oh. daughter. And for me, what is important is let us work together. Let us not be afraid to ask each other to help each other. As I always say that 
whether we are in corporate or in business, we are all important to each other. Women empowerment is critical. Women's voices are, in, are important. Most of my meetings that I have in Mozambique during my stay, it's collaboration with other women from Mozambique. And those for me are exciting because I am seeing us making mm. new history as women in businesses where we are saying, you've got this, I've got that. How do we collaborate? Exactly. And now this collaboration is no longer just something that we say, mm. we are doing it. I'm in Mozambique for these next few days because I am here to work with other women. Amazing. Amazing. That's, that's, that's really good. Great. That's really great. Thank you. Thank you, Pandora. Thank you for... Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was really amazing conversation. I'm sure it's going to inspire a lot of women yes. who is going to watch this podcast. And uh, to all of you, I'm going to... Uh, now I'm going to turn into Portuguese. All right. Please feel free. <laughs> so another challenge, Pandora, is you have to start learning Portuguese because I'm sure... Bom dia. Be, bom dia. Obrigado. Good, oh, great. <laughs> you have started already. Yes. Ok, great. A todos vocês que nos acompanham, muito obrigada. Ficam aqui várias mensagens importantes partilhadas pela Pandora, desde a sua experiência do trabalho que ela faz como mulher, como empreendedora e o que tem estado a fazer aqui em Moçambique e em outros países da África. Vamos deixar os contatos da Pandora para vocês poderem segui-la nas redes sociais e acompanhar o trabalho que tem estado a desenvolver, não só na África do Sul, mas a nível da região. Não se esqueçam de subscrever no nosso canal no YouTube, seguir as nossas plataformas digitais. Estamos no Instagram, estamos no Facebook, estamos no LinkedIn e podem também nos escutar através do Spotify. Muito obrigada e até a próxima. Música